Attorney Daniel Summerfleck says the writ of mandate filed against the Guam Federation of Teachers Union last November should raise foundational questions about what the union is and who it represents. Summerfleck filed the writ on behalf of his wife, Carol Titano Summerfleck, who is a member of the union. The first effect is that they'd be required to provide 10 days notice before they vote and take action on amendments to the Constitution, 10 working days, which was the nature of why the writ was filed originally because they were trying to conduct a meeting without providing the members adequate notice. Judge Alberto Lamarena heard arguments from GFT's attorney William Pohl and from attorney Summerfleck during a hearing in Superior Court this week and advised the court that the writ will remain in place while he works on a decision. Summerfleck says the writ voids any amendments that were passed without two-thirds of the members present, which he says raises serious questions for GFT. One of the questions that's being raised now is, okay, well, if anything that was passed without two-thirds membership vote is void, and the only constitution, that, at least the constitution article of incorporations that we were able to find at Revan Tax, the only one that was not modified by less than two-thirds of the members' votes was that 1966 Constitution. It really raises the foundational question of what the union is. Yeah. You know, is this a union that's designed for teachers only? Is this a union that's designed for educators only? Is this a union that's designed for people involved in public education? Because as, as the union has changed and these changes that have come about without the involvement of the membership, the union has changed as well. GFT President Matt Rector, however, says that doesn't make a difference for GFT because he says the union hasn't amended its articles and bylaws. Because this case didn't make any sense anyway because we haven't amended our articles and bylaws, right? And that's the local law says you, you can, or, no, you can only, you can't amend your Articles of Incorporation. We haven't amended our Articles of Incorporation. We amended our bylaws and our Constitution, which there's no mandate on them. We follow the Constitution. So it's kind of a silly case. Attorney Poole also filed a motion to recuse Summerfleck from the case because he is a former employee of the union. We filed uh, a motion to have Dan Summerfleck recused from being able to represent his wife in this case because it's a conflict of interest. He was a uh, an employee of the union and he had inside knowledge as to what uh, the union does and he used that inside knowledge in this writ and that's highly unethical. Meanwhile, Rector and Carol Summerfleck will face off in the re-election for GFT president in May. The election will be run by the U.S. Department of Labor and follows a complaint made by Summerfleck regarding last year's officers election. Betsy Brown, PNC News.